You're listening to Behind the Desk, a student's podcast. Hello guys and gals and welcome back to another podcast. Now, I've been at Loft Studios a little while now and I've run a decent amount of sessions and it's starting to become a mixture of different things to record like I've helped to record some bagpipes, obviously a lot of rappers, a country singer who's actually coming in next week thinking about it and a couple of guitars as well. But what I find really interesting to record is female vocals because it's something that I don't get to do very often and the ones that I've had a chance to record have been really nice to listen to. And that's what I want to talk about today. But before I get started, if you have any questions about anything I say today, then leave a comment down below or message me at Wellesley Media on Facebook. I'd really like to try and answer anything you're curious about. Or if there is anything I didn't really explain very well, I can give a bit more clarity and details about that. But anyway, back to today's topic. Female vocals, they're pretty cool to record. Well, any vocals are really, because everybody's voice is just so unique sounding. Like, it's very different recording one vocal compared to another. From the type of microphone you use, to the mixing process, and even the effects you want to add later on. But sticking with, you know, female vocals, um, the two sessions I'm going to share with you today were both female vocalists, but each of them had like a uniqueness to their voice and a style which I just really liked. And this just made the whole process fun to record and mix into their song slash backing track. So I'll start with Becca. Now Becca's a vocalist, she's a really cool voice, she's awesome music and all that kind of stuff. Now she came into the studio and wanted to re-record her vocals for a song she made in Logic, I think? Which was fine. Me and Tom ran the session together, Tom's the other intern by the way, and we set up the broader Phantom into, I believe, a Neve preamp, which was sounding really nice, because it was just, it was just adding a little bit of like lower mids to her voice, or warmth to her voice. And then she started singing, I was like, damn. Her voice was like really just incredible to listen to. It was like if you mixed an opera singer with smooth jazz, because the style of her song was like, really smooth and soft and dreamlike but her vocals were like super powerful as well but like high-end power as well so that's why I'm saying like it was a bit of opera as well because she she could hit some of the higher notes and she was holding notes left right and center as well which is you know again why I said operatic like operatic operatic like her voice was basically a performance and there was emotion behind it and I just really liked the sound of it as well which I think helps in recording sessions because if you are recording sounds that are pleasant and you enjoy it I feel like you get a better session overall from the quality of sound to just overall enjoyment of the session but anyway Becca's vocals were awesome it sounded really nice on the broader and the way we recorded was basically going through each section of the song, you know, section by section, on the main vocals, and repeating that until she was happy with a take. So she blasted through the verse and the bridge, no problems. But for some reason on this day, um, she just couldn't hit the chorus right. I mean, it sounded fine to me, it sounded fine to Tom, but to her it just wasn't right. And she tried, like, I remember her repeating that you know a take for the chorus for like an hour two hours but she just wasn't happy with it so eventually i think she made the decision to just get the harm harmonies for the verse and the bridge recorded that day and then just come back another day to do the final bits of the chorus and you know these things happen you know i've seen it a couple of times where musicians come in and they just can't do a certain part or a section of a song and they get really frustrated with themselves. They come in a day or two later and they just nail it first time. I'm not sure why this happens, whether it's like a psychological thing, or maybe they're just tired and not warmed up properly, or rehearsed. That, I mean, that would be a good thing to research into. But like I said, she came in another day to record the chorus, and you know what? 
she smashed through them, absolutely, chorus banged out in like 2-3 takes. Becca even said she was confused why she couldn't do them on that first day, because the line was easy to sing apparently. I mean I have no idea how difficult it was, I was just impressed by every take she did to be fair. Then again I don't sing, so maybe that's a reason for that. And you know, other than like the other parts of the recording session, which was basically just like tweaking a little bit of just like some of the stuff in the logic session itself, that session was pretty much done and dusted, you know, it was only Becca coming in to record vocals. Um, she was getting it mixed by another engineer called Liam, who's also pretty cool, I've met him, he's a really good engineer, mix engineer anyway. Uh, but she was happy with the session, with the recording at the end of the day, and it was fun to record. So, I quite liked that session. And I also liked the next session that I'm going to talk about. Now this was completely different. So, this was during the two week period where I was practically alone in the studio, like, none of the bosses were coming in, the other intern wasn't coming in, it was basically just me in the studio for about two weeks, just doing everything, almost. So I was in charge of every session and booking that came in. Now a girl called Frankie wanted to sing over a backing track that was created by her friend. And the backing was not not the best quality, but it did the job well enough. I mean it was only a demo track anyway so it wasn't going to be like amazing. But it sounded like a jazz and soul fusion with a lo-fi hip hop beat to it. I'm not sure how to describe it. but. It was another smooth sounding song. And that's another thing I've noticed when recording, you know, female vocals, is that they normally are more mellow sounding songs. Obviously not all all female vocals are like this. I've got examples of just like Blondie, Paramore, Pink. They spring to my mind immediately. But from my personal experience, the only songs I've recorded for females are just softer and smoother which is just an odd thing I've noticed. Anyway, back to the session. You could tell Frankie was a little bit nervous by the way her voice was a little shaky at the start and she struggled to hit certain notes. But once that had blown over, she was like belting out this really low end soul style voice. And I thought it sounded awesome to be fair, like. But what was interesting though is I accidentally set up the SM7B microphone because I assumed she was a rapper, but when she came in, she obviously wasn't a rapper. Um, but I'm kind of glad I did use the SM7B instead of the Brawner, because the Brawner is like really sensitive, especially to like um, lip smacks and pops in the voice, and it can sound really harsh on certain vocals, especially sibilant words or yeah, people who lip smack a lot. But the SM7B has got built-in pop shield and it's relatively quieter microphone in general. And I'm convinced the frequency response is designed to pick up more end anyway rather than the higher frequencies. And I just thought it sounded really nice with this girl's vocals. I'm also guessing this might have helped because you had a lower range while singing the main part. And a lot of delivery was more in the lower range of frequencies rather than the higher ones. But yeah, again, another good session overall. Uh, we recorded section by section, did some backing vocals and harmonies, and then after she left, I was able to start mixing the vocals. So I drained the harmonies and reverb and panned them across the stereo spectrum, just to give a sense of like space and grandness really, because that's what they wanted. And I gave each vocal line some room for itself really, that's what I was trying to do. Which I thought sounded really cool by the end of it all, and, and I, she was pretty happy with it as well. Uh, I think she's coming back to add like maybe a saxophone to the track at some point, which will be an interesting session I'm sure, because I've never recorded any kind of brass. So it should be fun, should be good. And that's about it for my experience working with and recording some female vocalists. Um, if you have any questions about anything I've mentioned today, then comment down below. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've been John and I'll see you next time.